Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Stroh Center on the campus of Bowling Green State University, where tonight on WOSN, we've got a regional final for you. The winner moving on to Dayton between the Van Wert Cougars and the Lutheran West Longhorns. Tonight's pregame action presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We're proud to call this home. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Evan Skilder. We'll bring you all the action tonight here, and Evan, it really doesn't get bigger than the regional final. I'll tell you what, this place is packed. Uh, the last game was great. We're expecting a good one here as well. A chance to get to state. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Two teams that are very, very good that I'm excited to watch. So you're exactly right. Two very good basketball squads, and it's time now to take a look at our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game. And they're presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area for over 100 years. And when you take a look at Van Wert first, the visitors on the scoreboard, what do the Cougars have to accomplish tonight? Well, look, Van Wert definitely has a size advantage in this game, right? So Van Wert needs to be physical. They need to get out. They need to get in the face of their assignment uh, on defense. And on offense, they're going to have to be prepared to get to the rim and be really tough inside. So physicality is going to be a big one. Second, they need to protect the paint. And I don't just mean defend in the post. I mean keep Lutheran West out of the paint. They've got a point guard, Derek Fairley, who averages nine assists a game. And a majority of those come from getting into the paint, collapsing the defense, and sending it outside for an open look. So they have to protect the paint. And then lastly, they have to manage their emotions. Now, Van Wert's a team, uh, a lot of these guys play football. They've yeah. been yeah. deep into playoff runs. And so they know how to play under extreme circumstances. So I expect them to be able to do that. But this is a team, Lutheran West, that could get out in front. Van Wert just needs to stay settled down, manage their emotions, and, and play in this game. And then on the flip side for the Longhorns, what's on top of their mind that, hey, we've got to do X, Y, Z to, to move on to Dayton? Yeah, well, the first one's attack the basket, right? Counter to uh, Van Wert trying yeah. to keep them out of the paint. Lutheran West wants to get inside, and they want to collapse that defense. They shoot 40%, nearly 40% from outside. So if they can collapse the defense and open things up on the perimeter, they'll be in good shape. Second, they need to move the ball. Again, 40% from outside. They're a team that likes to pass. Fairley's a great passer, but everyone else likes to distribute as well. If they can move the ball around, get Van Wert on their heels, make them move around, they'll get some easy open looks. And then lastly, transition defense is going to be big for them as well. Van Wert likes to get out and run once they get a rebound, and so Luther West is going to have to get back in transition. They're going to have to load to the ball, make sure they're not giving up any buckets on that offensive end. So those are our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game. We'll step aside, come back, we'll meet tonight's starting lineups and have first half play-by-play -play for you. It's the 19-7 Cougars and the 23-3 Longhorns, and it's next on WOSN. Back inside the Stroh Center, getting set for this Division II regional final between the Van Wert Cougars and the Lutheran West Longhorns. Got the officials and a good crew here in this Division II regional final with lots of experience and lots of guys who will be officiating at the state tournament next week as well. So appreciate them giving up their Saturday afternoon to ensure that we've got a little high school basketball action. The starting lineup for the Cougars, you'll see right there. When you take a look, Aiden Pratt, all-Western Buckeye League first-teamer, 20 points, nine rebounds a contest for the Cougars. Five seniors in the starting lineup for Van Wert this evening in this Division II regional final. On the other side for Lutheran West, one starting senior in Clayton Noble, Jason Levis, all North all Northeast District, I should say, sees some high 35 points, averaging 25 points throughout the tournament run, number zero. And then Derek Fairley, who talked briefly about in the pregame show, averages just sh shy of 10 assists a night. Cougars 19 and seven, five and four out of the Western Buckeye League. And according to the Martin RPI, the 55th best team in the state division two. So having a nice run here. Meanwhile, for Luther and West, 23 and three champions of the Chagrin Valley Conference Metro division. And they're the fifth best team according to the Martin RPI in the state. Take a look at how we got here. The Van Wert Cougars defeated Rossford on Thursday night. Lutheran West got a victory over previously once beaten Sandusky. And when you take a look at who's going to move on to the final four, those are the potential matchups. Van Wert 
and Lutheran West will play the winner of Chaminade Julian and Kettering Archbishop Alter at the state tournament next weekend. Got a great atmosphere, a great crowd here inside Destro Center as the Cougars get some final preparation, some final discussions in before we start. And really, when you mentioned earlier in the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac uh, pregame show, Evan, that this is a squad and a school that's seen a lot of playoff success in football, basketball, baseball over the course of the last couple of seasons. So the stage probably not too big for them right now. Yeah, that's going to benefit them quite a bit. This Lutheran West team uh, hasn't seen a regional tournament since 2007. And yeah. so these guys, if you talk purely from an experience standpoint, Van Wert definitely the upper hand. Now, obviously, they're going up against a very, very good team, a well-coached team. Jordan Duke, his second year leading the Longhorns team. But Limeland might be familiar with Jordan Duke. A few years ago, he coached at Cleveland Central Catholic, a team that lost to Shawnee right here in this gym in a regional semifinal about four years ago. So Jordan Duke, a young guy that has a lot of wins under his belt already. He has led a couple big time programs to a lot of success. And really looking forward to how this one shakes out. So we've got Matthew Meyer and Aiden Pratt inside the center circle and a tip off is won by the Longhorns as we get underway in this Division II regional final. Neither squad has been to the state tournament since the 90s. 92 for Van Wert, 98 for Luther and West. Somebody is going to punch that ticket to Dayton here in the next 32 minutes. So Van Wert's going to play a 2-3 zone right here. And if they're going to do that, that's fine. But what, the, what they have to do is make sure that their front line around the perimeter does not allow Lutheran West to penetrate inside. We'll see how they do with that. Levis into the near corner. Derek Fairley. Baseline. And he stepped on the end line. So the Van Wert students, Van Wert faithful, Excited about the first defensive possession there for the Cougars as they'll inbound to Luke Wessel. They'll give back to Garrett Gunner. And the Cougars will go to work for their first offensive set. It'll be interesting to see what Van Wert tries to do, what their focus is on offense, because they're going to want to keep the ball out of Lutheran West's hands. Lutheran West can put up a lot of points in a short amount of time. So I'd anticipate Van Wert wanting to have long, drawn-out possessions, just trying to milk that clock a little bit and limit the possessions that Luther West has. Gunner, baseline to the window, blocked. Affected by Meyer, he'll pull down the rebound. And the Longhorns will bring it up the floor. Fairley gives to Meyer, right back to Fairley. He'll hold and turn back to his bench for more instruction as we're still scoreless. So we approach the six and a half minute mark in the first quarter. Meyer in the post, kicks back out. Fairley thought about the three, straight away from Junior. Kimbamba off the mark. Gunner the rebound. Cougars outlet pass. Pratt off the window. Yes. Yeah, that's what Aiden Pratt can do. He's so strong. He gets to the rim, absorbs contact. He put that in like it was nothing. Bamba thought about the three. Which Derek Fairley will direct the traffic. Kimbamba holds into the corner. Levis. Bounce to the far side. Tried to get it to Meyer in the high post. Somehow gets the air in basketball, and he's got a bucket of his own. Meyer's strong, man. He averages 10 points a game, 6.6 .6 rebounds. A sophomore already getting Division I looks, and you can see why right there. Just very strong, put his shoulder into the defender, finished with no problem. Gunner pressured out to the midcourt strike, crosses over. Bounces, nearly stolen away. Three on the way, off the heel from Carson Smith. Long rebound, outlet to Levis. Up the window, no, fouled. And our first Lee Kinsel, or I beg your pardon, our first Lee's Famous Recipe free throws of the evening, upcoming. Really our first look at Jason Levis right here, 18.9 points per game. You're going to get a look at the Lattice replay. Just fouled there on the right arm. But a, a very good player, Jason Levis, first team all Northeast Ohio region. Averages 19 points, 4.4 rebounds, 3.4 assists. Just a junior. That one hits every bit of the rim and drops in. So Levis, the 78% free throw shooter, hits the first Lee's Famous Recipe free throw. Gives the Longhorns their first advantage of the evening. We have some folks across from us wearing T-shirts that spell out 1,000. So I'd imagine he's awfully close to 1,000 points if he doesn't have it right now already. Right, if that free throw didn't give it to him. 
So the score remains 3-2 after the miss. Gunner pressured, bounces to Pratt, able to rip away with the basketball. Nearly had it stolen away and did once more. Longhorns outlet pass, Derek Fairley off the window and an easy bucket for the 6-2 junior. It's good pressure up top from Luther and West. And we're going to have to take care of the basketball and also work on spacing. Right there, they had two guys in the same spot. They weren't quite sure who the pass was going to. It ended up with a loose ball, a turnover, and an easy layup. Yeah, those live ball turnovers are going to be killer for Van Wert if they can't limit those. Pratt fouled on the drive to the bucket as the foul committed by Junior Cambamba. His first. So much strength right there from Pratt, not phased at all by the defenders. This guy's going to be a Division II football player, so no surprise there. Gunner will inbound. Now Joshua Meyer checks in, 6'6", six, six, sophomore forward. Brother of Matthew Meyer. Pratt fouled on the inbound. Great positioning. And he'll step to the lane, famous recipe free throw line. A.J. Profit enters the ball game for Van Wert for the first time. Pratt with both of Van Wert's points so far. Six, shoots 66%. From the line. Couldn't drop that one in. These free ones are going to be important. Luther West, not a team that fouls a ton. Not going to get a ton of looks from that stripe. So have to convert when you get there. The 6 4 senior got the second one to go. And he's got all three to cut the lead to two. Fairly across the timeline. Man bring, to man now for Van Wert. We'll bring Dylan Barcheck to him. Gets it right back, bounces. Meyer underneath, stepped on the baseline. That's a turnover by the Longhorns. A second time they've got maybe just a little bit too deep in that end. Yeah, it's a great job from Pratt, too. He noticed that his assignment wanted to go baseline, so he just took a step, made sure his foot was planted right on the baseline. So in order to get around him, you have to go out of bounds, able to grab the turnover from there. Pratt picked up the dribble, bounces across the timeline. Wessel bounces, easy bucket for the Cougars as A.J. Profit, the hero from the district final. It's a great press break district right semi there too. I beg your pardon. Yeah, great job getting the ball up top. Maybe a little slow to find the open man, but he was still there. Levis silky smooth on a jumper and gives the Longhorns right back the lead at 7-5. Levis hits 58% of his field goal attempts, 44% from outside, just a very smooth shooter. Wessel underneath, kicks out Nate Phillips' right side. Profit holds. Gunner will stand left of the center circle as we eclipse the midway point of this first quarter. 7-5 on the Lodox Jewelry School Board. Trying to bounce out of it, stolen away by Fairley. It's a race back the other way. And a layup for Dylan Barchak. Throws the lead to four. And that's obviously a, an easy assist, but I really like what Fairley did right there. Easily could have gone up for a layup contested, but a, a guy with his amount of confidence, he probably put that through, but instead found his teammate for the easier layup. You can tell why he averages nine assists a game. Phillips surveys, rises, fires off the heel, rebound to Matthew Meyer. I don't hate that shot from Phillips. He's a 36% three-point shooter. Levis to the window, drops it home. And a little mini run for the Longhorns, makes it 11-5. Yeah, have to protect the rim. But going back to that three, Phillips, a, a guy that can shoot the rock, and you really want this Lutheran West team to come out a little bit, yeah. open some, up some space inside. So you take those shots, make them think twice about giving you that much space. Aiden Pratt called for the travel. So a little adversity here in the midway point of this first quarter. Van Wert tied it up at five. And a 6-0 run for the Longhorns. Has grown the lead and a couple of unforced miscues here by the Cougars. Yeah, just need to get a stop right here, have an extended possession on the next next play, or offensive possession, excuse me. Just kind of settle in here. This is, again, a really great team you're going up against. You don't want to fall behind too far. And really, every time Van Wert's had the opportunity to set their defense, it, it's gone pretty well for them. It's the transition buckets that have been a problem. Absolutely right. Levis, double teamed, ripped away by Pratt. Spins, fouled. Two more Lee Samus recipe free throws coming for the senior. Not a work right there. Good job by Pratt. They just blitzed the ball handler, took the ball away, and 
You see the good footwork and a nice job absorbing contact. Two more at the line. Pratt with all five of Van Wert's points. Missed the first as he did the first time at the free throw line. We're going to look at it. So see the steal. Great job just to get the fingertips at the right point. Stole it away from Levis. Spun. Got it right across the arm. And Pratt now with four of the six points for Van Wert. I beg your pardon. I said he had all, all of their points. H.A. Proffitt had a bucket earlier. So 11-6 now the score, and Van Wert gets to set that defense up once more. And we see a turnover. And Dylan Barchak had it slip out of his grasp. And Van Wert's Luke Wessel will inbound. Luther West needs to space the floor a little bit on their own. We talked about that for Van Wert, but Derek Fairley is a great, we talked about him being able to get to the basket, break down the defense, but they're so congested inside that there are too many defenders in there to take that away from Fairley. Gunner baseline, Wessel in the lane, up and under, and Luke Wessel gets his first basket of the evening. That's exactly what you want if you're Van Wert. Two quick buckets off of turnovers. Get back into this game. Fairley great defense. Kicks back out. Lewis Smith with the basketball. Gives back to Fairley. Top of the key. Hands off. Barchak thought about the three. Instead, throws right to Jason Levis. Guarded by Carson Smith. The handoff to Fairley. Meyer wants it in the post. Guarded by Pratt. Didn't get it. Approaching one minute remaining in the first quarter. Fairley rises, fires, hits. So quick and shifty right there. Fairley got to the spot he wanted to and rose up before Garrett Gunter could even get his feet set. Gunter's got a tough job tonight. He's done a really good job. That's just a really tough, good make from Derek Fairley. Gunner in the lane, Euros, floats, no. Pratt's throw back up at the rim, off the mark, and the rebound comes down to the Longhorns. They want to run. In the corner, Barchak, three, no. Profit the board. And with 35 seconds left in the quarter, we'll see if Van Wert holds for the final shot, trailing by five. Pratt, corner, spins, rises, can't hit off the window. Rebound, rebound by Lewis Smith. And now Luther and West will have the opportunity to close the quarter with the basketball, should they choose. Got to be tough right here. Going to play for the last shot. Fairly's quick. They're not even going to have to set a high ball screen if they don't want to. Fairly, guarded by Gunner, throws it up. To, got it. And that'll end the first quarter. 15 to 8. Luther and West leads Van Wert. After one, here in the regional finals on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at their Van Wert store or online at lodix.com. Instant replays provided by Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see if Carry Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. Jumper at the end of the first quarter. Grows the lead for Luther and West to 15-8. Good jumper as well. Derek Fairley's really tough to guard. And one of the reasons is you, you don't want to help off of your man to come guard Fairley because he can find you, right? So what Gunter's trying to do defensively is play a step back in order to not get beat. Well, Fairley's recognizing that he's getting into Gunter, who's taking a step back, and he's just soft in coverage, and he can go right up over him. He's hit two baskets in a row like that. Yeah, it feels comfortable in that mid-range as Wessel tries to get to the hoop. Can't drop it in. Rebound to Dylan Barchak. And Fairley will sprint up the far sideline. Free throw line. Levis will let it fly. Bang. And that's NBA range right there from Levis. That's a good catch and shoot. Nice smooth jumper. Five points for him. Levis averaging 25 down the tournament trail as Gunner hands off to Phillips. Works right into the corner. Wessel. Pass to Pratt. Draws out some Longhorns, and he's called for the foul. Or he called for the travel, I beg your pardon. Uh, I 
Thought he might have been fouled, but you see the range here from Levis on the Carry Insurance Instant Replay. It's a guy that's taken a lot of shots in the gym over his career. Shooting 44% from behind the three-point line, and it's not from a lack of volume. Van Wert switched back to his own defense here. Barchak, deep three. Back iron, rebound, out of play off the Longhorns, I believe. Now we'll have a discussion. Sure, they might call a jump ball here. Nope, they'll give it to Luther and West. I thought their rebounder was the last one to get his fingertips on it. But they retain possession fairly. The inbound gets it right back. High post, bounces to Meyer. Fairly right back, left wing three, and another one. Normally a passer, but they're giving him a lot of space. And one thing I really like about the way Jordan Duke coaches is that he allows his athletes to play basketball, right? He has a system, but as long as you're playing within that system, you have some freedom to take some shots, to take your man one-on-one. -on -one. He's done a really nice job. Cougars call timeout. We'll step aside as well. 21-8 in the second here on WOSN. Three pointers tonight sponsored by Lee Kinsel. Score big with Lee Kinsel on West Irvin Road and Van Wert. Take a look at their pre owned specials at leekinsel.com. Free throws tonight also brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. A couple of Lee Kinsel three pointers for the Lutheran West Longhorns has grown their lead to 21 to 8 here in the early stage of this second quarter. And what's the tweak for Van Wert out of that timeout, Evan? I think slow down a little bit offensively. They're kind of getting carried away. We've seen Pratt with two travels, maybe three with one that didn't get called. So just kind of slow things down here. Take some good shots, move the ball around the perimeter, try to get some open looks. Baseline, Wessel tries to create some room, double teamed. In a tight spot, passes out of it to Phillips. Crosses over, lost the handle, fairly comes out with it. And the Longhorns have the basketball. Yeah, Lutheran West is doing a nice job speeding Van Wert up and kind of coaxing them to take those seams and dribble into the teeth of the defense, and they've created a lot of turnovers off that. Fairly. Levis hit the deep Lee Kinsel three. A few possessions ago. Meyer lost the handle, slapped it off the calves of Phillips, retained by the Longhorns and a traveling violation committed by Levis. Decent footwork. He got his man up in the air and wanted to draw a foul, but in doing so and getting that body, you'll see right here, he gets a guy up in the air. Watch that back foot. Ah. He well, was adamant. He pointed to the yeah. spot on the floor and he saying, might have a point. No, nope, I, I kept this thing right here. Nonetheless, man work basketball trailing by 13 as Gunner comes to the near sideline. Phillips for three. No. Offensive rebound after the miss Lee Kinsel three. Phillips My is profit. 0 for 2 from outside, but he is a good shooter. So I'm not sure why they're leaving him open. Obviously, he's missed two, but he's a guy that can knock him down. I hope he keeps shooting because they, they need him to drop some from outside. Get a look at the carry insurance instant replay here. They try to lob to Aiden Pratt. Lewis Smith commits the foul, which is the fourth foul committed by the Longhorns. It's a great play right there. Just a nice lob for the biggest guy on the court, Pratt. Kept the, kept the ball high, put it right off the glass and in. Can't make it easier than that. And then a block back the other way. Carson Smith rejected it, got it off a Longhorn out of play. Van Wert feeling a little bit of momentum here. Just what the doctor ordered. You'd have another good possession right here. So Gunner will get the basketball inbounded. Clayton Noble back in the game for Luther and West. Number 24 has the responsibility guard, Nathan Pratt. Working hard, too. Nice physical matchup right there. Pratt throws. Gunner, left side. Gives to Profit. Smith, right side. Cougars trail by 11. So we approach the midway point. The second stands, Phillips. They really want him to shoot. 
Gets to Gunner. And another foul in the post is Meyer. Committed it, guarding Aiden Pratt. Nope, so. It's been really physical down there between Pratt and Noble. And right there, Noble just a little bit too much. Looks like he hooked Pratt a little bit. His first foul. See inbounds, nearly the same thing. Got it to Carson Smith. Blocked from behind, however. That's that 66 body of Matthew Meyer. Levis thought about the deep Lee Kinsel three. Instead, free throw line jumper. Left it short. Rebound tipped high in the air. Lands in the hands of Aiden Pratt. Two on one. Back the other way. Phillips got his defender in the air. Stripped and taken away by the Longhorns. Really good play right there by Mordecai Godson. To the window. And a foul. That was a quick hand. Godson at the other end. This is, this is going to be the, the foul here, but... Godson was kind of on his way down off the head fake, and on his way down, he was able to hit that ball right out of Van Wert's hands. And gets down to the other end. Going to take a look right here. Yeah, that's right across the ball. That's a good play. So, Mordecai Godson at the line. Can't spin in the latest famous recipe free throw. There are those who believe that the ball does not lie. Well, sure, the ball doesn't have a brain, though. It can't lie or tell the truth. That's all right. Godson back at the line. One of the seven seniors on this Longhorn roster, and missed them both. Pratt the board. He'll bring them all up the floor. Kicks to profit. Coach Duke wanted to travel over there, asking the referee for the call because A.J. Profit kind of shuffled his feet. Gunner back to the basket in the high post, continued to dribble. Unfortunately, ripped away by Godson. Right, Levis for three. Left the Lee Kinsel triple try attempt short, and then a foul committed by Shamari Richard on the rebound attempt. Another look at it on the replay. Matthew Meyer actually came up over the top. So that is the first foul committed by Matthew Meyer. It's the sixth foul committed by the Longhorns, so with 3.38 to go here in the second quarter. Next one sends the Cougars to the line as they trail by 11. Been stuck at 10 for a while as Wessel, tightly guarded, bounces to Pratt. Baseline. Kicks. Caden Schaefer in the game for the first time. Drives. Gives to Profit. Back to the basket. Drives. Schaefer for three. Too strong. Pratt the offensive rebound. Put back. No. And fairly the board. It was a great crash to the board to grab the offensive rebound, but the ball just slipped out of his hands on the way up. To the window. Godson. No. Rebound. Out of play. As Shamari Richards stumbled over the baseline. Under three minutes to go here in the first half. Cougars force another turnover. And that end, Nate Phillips comes back on the floor, as does Carson Smith for the Cougars. Van Wertz has done a nice job defensively for the most part. Offensively, though, they really need to get going. Looks like a little zone defense played by the Longhorns. Pratt in the corner. Lobs out of it to Smith. Into the near corner, three from Wessel. Missed everything. Phillips hit to the floor while trying to grab the rebound. No call. Two on two for the Longhorns. Get a jump ball? No. Get a foul committed by Van Wert. Two least famous recipe free throws upcoming for the Longhorns. We'll look at the carry insurance instant replay. Thought maybe Nate Phillips had tied it up. Yeah, it's a tough one right there. In real time, especially. So Shamari Richard, six foot senior, at the least famous recipe free throw line, looking to grow the lead for the Longhorns. Drops in that one. 22 to 10. 
on the Lonex Jewelry scoreboard. And if Luther West stays in that zone defense, Van Wert really needs to attack. Don't settle for contested three-pointers. If you get the ball with the defense on the move, try to get inside, but be aware, they do want you to suck inside, so you have to be ready to toss the ball out once that defense collapses. See what they go with right here. Looks like they're going to match up. Cougars will get it across the timeline with Phillips to the right side. They do go back to the man-to-man. Phillips gets rid of it to Gunner, standing just right in the center circle with two minutes to go in the first half. 23-10, Van Wert trails. It's fairly chases Gunner to the near sideline. Corner, Phillips lets it fly. Lee Kinsel three, missed everything. The Longhorns race back the other way. Coach Dukes must have seen something that we don't know, because again, 36% from outside for Nate Phillips. That's not a bad number, and he is missing badly on these open looks. Meyer for three off the front iron. That Lee Kinsel miss. Gives the basketball back to the Cougars. Gunner assertive to the bucket, blocked. Long baseball outlet pass to Levis. He's fouled, nearly spun it in anyway. And Jason Levis. Well, that's probably a good foul. It wasn't a shooting foul. I was going to say. an easy layup. Not going to give him any free throw attempts. He's walking to the free throw line saying, Man, I was trying to spin that in, but say it's on the floor. Fouls to give, might as well. Phillips went right through the back of him. Fairly, look at the inbound. Got it right back. In the lane, floats. Gets a friendly bounce, and Derek Fairley has 11 here in the first half. Yeah, he's been really impressive, too. He's attacking. He wants to score. Normally a passer. We keep talking about it. Nine assists per game. Now here's a steal. Comes back the other way. Easy layup for Jason Levis. And that's how you get an extra assist <laughs> that's right exactly there. exactly right. Yeah, he kind of got an easy one there. But we saw that on another fast break as well, where he had a chance for a contested layup, but instead got the defense to commit and just gave it to a teammate. Lee Kinsel three on the way. No, off the front iron after the attempt from Profit. And with 40 seconds remaining in the half, the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard says 27-10, Longhorns. And they'll walk it across the timeline and watch the numbers fall off the scoreboard. It's a tough assignment right now for Caden Schaefer. Once Fairley is ready to go, he's going to try to take him one-on-one -on -one and get a, a defender to come help. Ten seconds. Fairley bounces. Meyer spins, hits. Really good footwork by Meyer. Cougars got to get it off. Profit, no. Wouldn't have counted if it went. And that'll do it for the first half of play. Luther and West, you see on a carry insurance instant replay, great footwork by Meyer to get his fourth point of the evening. And it's 29-10 Longhorns at the halftime break here on WOSN. Our halftime adjustments presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years, proud to call this home. When you take a look at the halftime adjustments, Evan, what's Ben Lodick, the Van Wert head coach, what's the, the changes they're, they're discussing in a halftime break? Well, look, you go back to the keys of the game, right? First one, be physical, check. Two, protect the paint, check. Three, manage emotions, seems to be a check mark but they're still losing big in this game. So I suppose make shots would be the halftime adjustment. And I, I know that sounds facetious, but look, they're, they're playing pretty well other than just converting. You look at those stats, 22% from two. They're 0 for 7 from the three-point line. It's just not going well for, for Van Wert right now. So, you know, if they can hit a couple threes, make a couple buckets and – uh, really get some momentum, that would be big. Usually that, or usually when you're 0 for 7 from 3, you stop shooting them, but yeah. they need to get something going and get this defense to come out a little bit. Yeah, see if they can't hit a couple of these. Lee Kinsel triples here in his second half, trailing by 19. 
Jason Levis. I almost said Will Levis. That's my guy, Kentucky quarterback. <laughs> I was going to say, i got to get Will Levis off the mind. Jason Levis in the short corner. Gets rid of it. Meyer to Fairley. Derek Fairley, high post. Miscommunication, luckily for him. Levis See, staying like there. Right there, Fairley got cut off before you get in the paint. That's exactly what you want to do if you're Van Wert. And Jason Levis, short on the free throw line jumper. It's a good defensive possession. Straight away, Wessel had it poked from behind, and it stays with the Cougars. So Gunner will inbound, just right of his own basket. Nate Phillips, back to Gunner. Top of the key, throws left. He'll try to work it down to Pratt. Bounced it off somebody's shoe, I believe, and it poked up in the air. Yeah, the pass was just too low. Tried to bounce it in there, but it's not a good look. Not, not how you want to start. Now Lutheran West just going to back it out. Probably take their time here, moving it around the perimeter near half court. Junior Cam Bamba back in the game for the Longhorns. Only played about three minutes in the first half after picking up his second foul. And they get it down low to Meyer, and Matthew Meyer muscles up a shot and in. There's where Lively, or Fairly, excuse me, is dangerous. Right, he turned that corner, got into the paint, defense came out to help, he just dropped it off for an easy bucket. Gunner inside the center circle, gives to Pratt with his back to the basket, hands off to Phillips, off the screen, into the corner, Gunner, Carson Smith in the high post, back to Phillips. Again, they'll sag off of him. He'll pump, drive, floats, no. Pratt's tip off the mark. Meyer, another rebound. Got to be able to make those shots. There's no way you're going to climb back into this game if you miss him at the rim. Fairly tries to sprint past Gunner. We'll pull it back out. In the high post. Oops. Tried to go with the scoop shot from the left side. Lost it as he went to put it up. And it's a turnover by the Longhorns. Lost the handle on his way up there. That's a shot that he can make. He wanted a foul. Yeah. But I, I didn't see any I foul. I just it. saw him lose the ball on the way up. I think he got past the defender and just went to let it fly and lost it. 31-10. Gunner across the timeline. Uses a screen from Pratt. Free throw line. Phillips. Profit. Gunner, baseline, layup, yes. It's a great take right there. The defense got a little bit lazy. Just kind of jogged out to guard him. He went right past him. Levis floater off the mark. Rebound to Phillips. Cougars in the high post. Smith backs out. Crosses over. Profit. Gives to, gets it right back. Profit from Phillips was great in the district semifinal. Works there as well. Mac to Mac successful possessions for the Cougars. Makes a 31 14 on a lot of story scoreboard. I know there's still a big lead here for Lutheran West, but I think they need to put their foot back on the gas. You do not want to fall asleep. Tortoise in the hair type stuff, yeah. right? You don't want to take a nap. You don't want to allow Van Wert to get some momentum because as soon as you do, it gets really hard to climb back into this game. That is a goal tennis. Yes. yes, it was. Might work out in Van Wert's favor, however, as Pratt to the window. Finger rolls up and in. And a little bit of momentum and a little bit of life for the Cougars. Timeout taken. Van Wert shrinks the lead to 15. They only scored two points in the second quarter. You'll take a look at the carry insurance replay. This is about the best angle you could have for the goaltend. Can't grab the rim to hold you up. It could be a little more widely used, but it was not. Ends with an Aiden Pratt finger roll, which is probably a great look from the other <laughs> camera on the uh, backboard on the carry insurance replay. But they worked two points in the entire second quarter and come out and have six here in the first couple of minutes of the third. Yeah, and it's a good timeout from Coach Duke. We just said it, right? They need to keep their foot on the gas because as soon as you fall asleep, look, you can look at studies psychologically. I, I teach a sports psychology class as well. Uh, just a little bluffing university <laughs> reference there. But anyway, Studies show if you are ahead in a game and, and you kind of take your foot off the gas, you're mentally out of it, it is really, really difficult to turn, change your mind around mm -hmm. and twist the key and turn that engine back on. So you do not want to start to fall asleep because a team like this in an environment like this, uh, they can come back, again, just, just kind of chip away. 
at the lead. So I'm sure Coach Duke took that time out to say, okay, listen, you're looking lazy on defense. We're not doing much offensively. Step it up. Let's put them away. Well, and you, you look at it, you had a 19-point lead. You feel like, all right, we've got the ability, if we want, to try to run some clock here, be patient uh, offensively. And Van Wert, in the first half at least, especially here to start the third quarter, when they've had their defense set, things have gone pretty well for them. It's the live ball turnovers that lead to easy buckets as Meyer tries to climb the ladder, fouled, and he'll shoot two Lee's famous recipe free throws. But when Van Wert's been a able to set the defense and say, hey, this is what we're doing, and rather than runouts, things have gone pretty well for the Cougars. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Meyer to the line after the Pratt foul. Shoots 63% from the free throw line this season. Pratt's first foul. The 6'6 sophomore drops it in. Get a look at it on the carry insurance instant replay. Tried to go up and dunk it. Foul's a foul, definitely a weak one, but Pratt did get him on the hand, caused that ball to come out. Meyer, second free throw attempt, missed that one. Yeah, you know what? I, I thought I saw that from this angle as well. Carson Smith kind of let it go out thinking that the other team touched it. I was worried that it was touched by him. Referee said it was touched by him. Now they're going to have a quick chat. I say, it looked like somebody kind of went through him. We'll see on a carry insurance incident replay. Switch it. Yeah, I'm not sure even from that angle what the – it's certainly close enough that if they had gotten it wrong that you know, you'd understand that. Um, I'm actually surprised they switched it. It was that close. But here you go. You're Van Wert. You only gave up one on that possession. Just keep chipping away. Phillips takes the handoff from Pratt. Works left. Pratt, backdoor cut, a little long out of play and goes to the Longhorns. We'll take a look at this carry insurance instant replay one more time. Me? Yeah, me? I don't know. Nonetheless, Van Wert doesn't score back the other way, so no damage done as a foul committed by Gunner in the backcourt. It's Gunner's first. That was a tough one right there, too. It looked like Fairly might have hooked around Gunter to cause that contact, but referee saw it differently, but no big deal there. It's only the second team foul for Van Wert. Fairly brings it across the 10 second line. Works on that far sideline, bounces to Meyer. He'll go up and under, and Joshua Meyer's first basket. Throws the lead back out to 18 of 34, 16. Pratt, Phillips. Pratt just went for the steal right there and missed the ball and an easy turn and score. Three on the way from Profits, good. And the first made Lee Kensel three by the Cougars. Cuts the lead right back to 15. A.J. Profit buries it. Now one for eight from outside, but those are the kind of shots that can help you get back into this game. Fairly guarded by Gunner. Slaps it off the floor to Meyer. Tries to bounce it to the other Meyer. And the Longhorns retain possession as Joshua Meyer tried to get it to Matthew Meyer. Jason Levis crosses over, right elbow, bounces back to Junior Cambamba. They'll leave off for Fairley. Levis turns the corner in the lane, got the hoop and the foul. That's a tough basket right there. Nate Phillips was just kind of falling over, and Levis, I think, noticed that he was falling over and tried to kind of fall into him to draw contact. As soon as a defensive player is out of control, as if you can draw that contact, you're going to get the call. Eh, he kind of went into him a little bit, but either way, nice finish. Now a chance for a three-point play. Levis up to 12 points. 36-19 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Two and a half to go in the third. Levis, a 78% free throw shooter. Number zero at the line. Knocks home the Lee Samus recipe free throw. 13 for the junior. It's a quiet 13, too. He hasn't yeah. really stood out like a 20-point scorer usually does, but he's done all the little things really, really well, gotten himself some open looks, and, of course, he's got a great point guard distributing the basketball to him. Gunner with his heels on the center circle, works left. It's Van Wert. Looks at the Lutheran West defense. 
Caden Schaefer back in the game for the Cougars. Smith gives it a corner to Wessel. Picked up the dribble in a tough spot. Bounces out of it to Gunner. Back to the basket. Cross court pass. Schaefer's three. Blocked. Can Bamba stepped on the end line. And the Cougars will retain possession. It's a nice closeout right there and blocked by Derek Fairley. You see it right here. Fairley, instead of running right at the shooter, kind of ran to his right. Fairley's left, able to stand up and knock that ball away. 1.45 to go in the third. Bounced into Pratt. Gonna try that again after a kick. Some Cougars retain possession. I'll tell you what, I'm a big fan of the in-stadium music <laughs> that we have in this regional final. We have had some, some bangers. We've got some DMX playing. That was T.I. right there. Inbound to Schaefer. Gunner, left side. Pratt, down low, hangs, hits, and the foul. Aiden Pratt with 10 of their 21. Get a great look at it to carry insurance instant replay. Not swatted as he put it up. Yeah, just good patience right there. Got his man up in the air. Waited till he started to come down. Went up. Drew the foul. That's exactly what you're taught to do at the bucket. A little head fake. Keep the defense off balance. So a 6'4 senior. Back of the line. Shoot 66% from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Old fashioned three point play converted. Pratt with 11. Three for five now tonight from the free throw line. Well, they're going to guard Derek Fairley full court right here with Caden Schaefer. I might just be playing that role of chase number one wherever he goes. That's right. As Lavix brings it across the timeline. As Connor Campbell in the game for Van Wert for the first time. Levis, right side. Backs out. Will rise and fire. Lee Kinsel three. No. Rebound. Pratt. And he'll push the tempo for a moment. Campbell to the window. Yes. Great job right there by Carson Smith on the pass. Had the lane open. Made sure the defender committed before dropping it off. Really like that play. Fairly inside the three-point line. Under a minute to go now in the third. Backs back out. Guarded by Schaefer. Works right down Main Street. Ooh. Spun it in and the foul. My goodness, Nick Fairley, the English. That Derek Fairley, I, be, I beg your pardon. A really nice finish right there. A lot of strength. He's not the biggest guy, but nor is Schaefer, so he's able to absorb some of that contact. Go up and under the basket. Fans not too happy about the extracurriculars afterward, but he got knocked right across the say, head. Get it so in the head. You know, sometimes, sometimes you get a little amped up after you finish your contact like that. Fairly now with 13. Goes back to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Van Wert had a little bit of momentum. And the 6'2 junior can't hit the free throw. However, rebound pulled down by Clayton Noble. And a Longhorns back it back out. Derek Fairley, guarded by Wessel. Fairley looks at Jordan Duke for instructions on how they want to handle the final 30 seconds here as Junior Cambamba gives to Levis. Guarded tightly by Campbell. Got his hand in the bread basket there for just a moment, nearly stripped it away. Levis, right down Main Street. Nearly stolen away by Pratt, able to bounce out of it. Two on one, back the other way. Gunner to the hoop, no. Rebound by Smith, high off the glass, no. Wessel rips it down, gets out of it. Back door, Gunner Ooh. nearly dropped it in for the and one. And with under a second to go in the third, Garrett Gunner will step to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line after the erratic possession by the Cougars. Obviously, Van Wert wants to make these two free throws, but I'll tell you what, they have to be really happy with how they played that third quarter. Yeah. A tremendous Absolutely. effort getting themselves back into this game, hanging close playing tough and again Lutheran West kind of took their foot off the gas a little bit so we'll see if they can step it up coming out into the fourth quarter. Gunner's first Lee Samus recipe free throw no so the lead remains 15 half a second to go in the third which the half a second has not been popular here for Lyman Land teams at Bowling Green 
some of them anyway. It's missed it, floats it at the hey. horn, got it! Dropped it in after the miss. Nobody boxed out the shooter. Gunner drops it in at the horn to cut the lead to 13 after three. They, they might not be able to count this. They're going to talk real quick. That ball actually took a tip out to the shooter. You're going to see right here. Oh, maybe we'll get a replay here in a second. But the shot obviously was off in time, but I don't think the clock started when it should have because the rebound was tipped out. So the referees are having a quick chat here. They'll discuss it. We'll step. Oh, we'll take a look at it here. How the basketball got out. Yeah, and it took yep. a touch. Campbell. It might have started actually maybe a little early, even if you look at the clock yeah. in the bottom right hand corner. Now they don't have the ability to look at that like we do here in the regional finals. But they'll talk about it. And we'll see what the score is when we come back for this fourth quarter. Currently sits at 39-26 after three on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Lonix Jewel, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at their Van Wert store or online at Lonix.com. Also, instant replays tonight provided by Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see if Carry Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. So, bucket counts at the end of the third quarter. Didn't have indisputable video evidence to overturn it because they can't look at video Didn't have any video they, evidence. They can't look at video <laughs> evidence. So, they stuck with the call which I think was right. It looked to me right. like the clock had started appropriately, and Gunner had just dropped it in. Pratt on the block, muscles up a shot, and the lead is down to 11. Tell you what, this Lutheran West team is finally sweaty. The Van Wert Cougar faithful behind us. In front of you, but behind us, rise to their feet trying to will their Cougars to the state tournament for the first time since 1992. Van Wert trailed by 19 at the half. At 29-10, a big third quarter has them right back in it. Noble gives to Junior Cambamba. Tries to get past Pratt, can't. Noble in the corner. Finns wanted a double dribble right there, but he just kind of lost the handle on the pass. Fairly fouled. It's committed by Wessel. It's the fourth team foul against Van Wert. So not bad shape for the Cougars in terms of foul trouble. It really, uh, Nate Phillips has three fouls. He's the only Cougar in any sort of foul trouble. Junior Cambamba takes a seat on the bench. Levis, corner three, buried it. Man, I'll tell you what, fairly right there telegraphed that pass. He was staring at Levis the whole time, but Nate Phillips just not able to get close enough to close out. That's a really good shooter that you left open. The Lee Kinsel triple by Levis gives him 16. Gunner, floater, no. Put back and the foul for Aiden Pratt. Big answer right there, especially if he hits this free throw. Pratt has been so tough inside, up to 13 points, looking for 14 here. We'll see on a carry insurance instant replay, Gunner had the floater, but Pratt put it right back up before he even hit the floor. Got hammered by Meyer. Correction, Pratt has 15 points, looking for 16 on this free throw. So number 15 has 15, as it goes to the least famous recipe free throw line. The 6'4 senior, played quarterback at the University of Finley. Drops it in, now has 16. The Cougars will pick up full court here, trailing by 11 once more. Levis crosses the timeline, guarded by Phillips. Crosses over it, straight away. Pratt now guarding so. Levis. Meyer, mismatch against Phillips. Cross court pass, lands in the hands of Derek Fairley. Fairly straight away. Nearly had it stolen away, and a foul committed by Aiden Pratt. Not sure if Pratt fouled on purpose, but probably a good foul right there. Fairly was about to get yeah. into a, 
a four on five situation with Pratt out of the picture and Pratt just needed to, to foul right there because that defense was about to collapse and create some open shots. So nearly two minutes gone here in this fourth quarter. 42-31 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Fairly across the timeline, guarded by Campbell. Tries to turn a corner, instead pulls it back out. Joshua Meyer gives to Junior Cambamba. Free throw line, Matthew Meyer. Nearly denied by Phillips. Instead, Pratt got him in a tough spot throw it away and it goes to the Cougars. Good trap right there. Making it tough for Lutheran West to move the basketball. Now a chance to cut this into single digits. Can you believe that at halftime? No. Would you have assumed or even bet or guessed or anything that this was going to be this close? No, a 29-10 game at the half and now as we approach the five minute mark of the fourth quarter, the Cougars have the ability to cut it to single digits. Gunner floats, oh. rejected by Joshua Meyer. Again, Joshua Meyer and Matthew Meyer both getting D1 looks as 6'6 sophomores. Still growing. Both are very athletic. They're strong inside, and you can see right here the good timing on the block. Well, and that, that hole collapsed quickly for Gunner. There was a path to the bucket, and Joshua Meyer climbed the ladder and sent it out of play. Cougars, Phillips for three, too strong. It's and stay. it stays with Van Wert. Phillips is 0 for 4, but again, I, I like that he's continuing to shoot. Yeah. You have to have the confidence. You have to lead the team. Now he's going to get a, a quick rest right here. But you know, I, I can tell he's a little bit dejected looking across the sideline. But this is a good player, a guy that they're going to need here in the last three minutes or so. They inbound to Wessel. In the lane. Kicks out of it. Profit. Wessel. Back to Profit in the corner. Puts it on the deck. Lost it for just a moment. And now will hold. Wessel bounces to Pratt. Guarded by Cambamba on the block. Five minutes to go. Pratt got Ooh. it. That is tough right there. A quick timeout taken by Van Wert. Pratt some extra words yeah, right say, there. Gotta be careful. Gotta nah, be careful. I love careful. it. I love it. Bring it on. You see the carry insurance replay. Got it. And you see the words. And it's now down to nine. 4.57 to go here in this fourth quarter. And Aiden Pratt has been known as a gamer for a long time. And he's showing it here in the second half of this Division II regional final. Yeah, Pratt up to 18 points. He's been fantastic here in the whole game, but specifically in the second half. I've just been really impressed by how he's put his team on his back. He had six at halftime. So, of course, a big second half here for him. And he's got his team packed to within single digits, if you can believe it. So the Longhorns will have the basketball out of the timeout. 4.57 to go as Clayton Noble will inbound. Forty-two thirty-three. after it was 29-10 at the break. Nate Phillips back into the game just like that. Drawing the defensive assignment of Derek Fraley. Fairly, excuse me. Fairly. Between the circles, crosses over. Joshua Meyer. Left wing. Surveys of a five second call. Oh, Up call timeout time called by Jordan Duke. Got it just in the nick of time. Did the second year coach. We got a break in the action and a break on WLSN. Pointer tonight, sponsored by Lee Kensel. Score big with Lee Kensel on Urban Road and Van Wert. Take a look at their pre-owned specials at LeeKensel.com. Free throws brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Do you know WOSN is viewer-supported nonprofit ministry? Every spring we launch a spring funding campaign. Would you make a donation? Our goal is $50,000. Donate online at WTLW.com slash donate or call 419-339-4444. The Spring to Life funding cam campaign continues through Mother's Day. 4.33 to go, 42-33. Lutheran West with the lead in the basketball. 
Van Wert has cut the lead to single digits. Derek Fairley out of the timeout to the left elbow. Gets rid of it. Barchak tightly guarded. In a tough spot, gets rid of it to Fairley along the near sideline. Just inside the midcourt stripe, now inside the center circle. That's five and right that's there. a five second violation, yes sir. The official might have even gave him five and a quarter, five and a half. <laughs> they were right in front of us counting. And a turnover forced by the Cougars. And they have the ability to shrink it even more as we'll get a chance to mop up a little perspiration after fairly hit the neck. And look, we said it at halftime, Van Wert has been playing great defense the entire way. It's the offense that has struggled. They've really started to come alive and they've realized that you know, they're not going to get it done with their athleticism necessarily. They're going to have to get it done by being strong, by getting inside. Pratt has definitely carried the load for Van Wert, but all these guys should be very proud of how they've played here in the second half. Wessel, right of the lane, under four to go. Gunner, kicks, Profit, Lee Kinsel three, short. Offensive rebound by the Cougars, and a foul committed by Luther and West. Man, sometimes we see on college floors like this when you have this college three-point line yeah, and then the yeah. white three-point line that's taped, that's makeshift. A lot of times you see guys get confused, and right there is a great example. You see a, a deep three-pointer taken from behind the college line, which is actually, I mean, that three was about two or three feet from behind where they normally shoot. As Pratt goes up, we saw that play earlier, just a lob on the inbound, and he puts it in. 42-35 now on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. After the inbound by Pratt, he's got 20, and a bucket back the other way for the Longhorn. That's just Meyer, Meyer going baseline right there, getting the defender on his shoulder, getting all the way to the rack. Gunner, left side, swatted from behind. Matthew Meyer throws it away after the rebound, and it goes to the Cougs. It's Luther West that's kind of sped up right now. And run too sure, and here, here's the basket from yeah, the inbound on the carry insurance instant replay. So Van Wert got that basket, and then they just inbounded it, and the official. <laughs> right, a little confusion. Well, yeah, we the got buzzer, all, the buzzer oh. went off. Nonetheless, Pratt fires up a shot, fouled, and a 6-4 senior can go back to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line to shrink the lead even more. Yeah. He's done such a nice job around the basket being patient. Lutheran West really needs to start staying on their feet, just making him go up over the top of them. They've been biting on those head fakes a lot, and it's resulted in a lot of fouls. They have five team fouls here in the half. Well, and Pratt's a, a tough customer. He's gotten hammered a couple of times, and you know, there's not many guys who are the starting quarterback, but also play defensive end. Yeah. Uh, and you see the toughness there. Just time after time, he's gotten the ball in a tough spot and just been just swatted across the chest, across the arms, and it sh hasn't shown any effect on him so far. 21 points after the made least famous recipe for Ethro. Looking for 22. Got it. Do you think Joe Burrow can play defensive end? No. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. He can do about anything he wants. Lead is down to seven. As we approach the three-minute mark, Fairley turns the corner, fouled by Phillips. That'll be his fourth. It's the seventh foul committed by Van Wert, which puts Luther and West into the bonus. So Fairley now at the least famous recipe free throw line. 78% free throw shooter. This will be his first free throws of the game. Has 13 points in this Division II regional final. 11 of those were in the first half. He was 5 of 5. Left it short. Pratt the board. Three minutes to go. Top of the key. Pratt somehow ends up with the basketball. Cougars idly Kinsel 3 for just a moment. Profit won't let it fly. Gunner holds. Says let's do it again. Yeah, got to get going here. I know you don't want to force a shot, but definitely want to play with some purpose. Longhorns get the steal, and a timeout taken by Jordan Duke, the Lutheran West head coach. Under 90 seconds to go, or under two and a half to go, I beg your pardon. And for even Van Wert to get this thing back down to a seven-point advantage, 
They trailed by 19 at the break. We'll take a look at the potential matchups down the line. A lot of very good basketball teams still left for the Division II state bracket. A lot of familiar names there as well. Take a look at the D3. Had a great game earlier oh, today man. here at Bowling Green where the Ottawa Glendorf Titans were pushed to double overtime by the, Van, by the Wayne Trace Raiders. OG pulls away in a second OT, makes their third consecutive trip to Columbus, and a lot of local representation in the Division IV State Championship with Crestview and the Rushi Raiders returning to Columbus. Both have been there in the past. Neither one of these schools has been there in quite a while, 19 and 92 for Van Oort, 1998 for Lutheran West, so somebody's gonna end a long drought here in the final 229. As Van Wert's now being told, hey, listen, we, any foul will send Lutheran West to the line, so be cognizant of that as Connor Campbell comes back in the lineup as Nate Phillips takes his seat. You think about Coach Duke in the postseason. He's coaching the district championship six times, winning four. He's, he's advanced to the regional final twice, but lost the first one. This is number two for him, so he's trying to get to the Final Four as well. Derek Fairley fouled from behind by Carson Smith. Will be his third, I believe. And will send Fairley to the strike. Trying to figure out what's going on here. Both these teams getting a little chippy here late, as you would expect. Looks like Lewis Smith comes in the game in exchange for Matthew Meyer. Fairly back at the least famous recipe free throw line. Missed the first of the one and one the last time down. Got that one. See guys all over the floor after that shot went up. 45 37. Fairly goes back to the stripe. Leading by eight. Leading by nine. Cougars could really use a Lee Kinsel triple here. Yep, need to get a good shot, but need to get a quick one. Gunner, baseline, bounces out of it to Wessel. Right wing, lobs to Smith. Back to the basket. Faces, turn around right hand, hook shot, no. Rebound through the hands of Levis. A Cougar sits on top of it. And a jump ball and the possession arrow favors Luther and West. Good hustle right there from Van Wert though. The ball looked like it was Luther and West all the way, but in flew the Cougars, able to get a paw on it. Force the jump ball, they'll get the possession arrow under two to play. Now, well, Kick up a little perspiration there between the logo and the top of the key. We're at a pile of humanity. Junior Cambamba along the far sideline, ready to throw it in for the Longhorns. Gets into Fairley in the backcourt. Under two minutes to go. Nine point lead for Lutheran West. Cambamba picked up the dribble. Fouled by Gunner. Cambamba, a 56% free throw shooter. Going back to Fairley, 15 points, six assists, three steals, two rebounds. Doing it's it all. Been all over the place. Very impressive point guard. Levis leading the team with 16 points, but to me, it's been Fairley that I've been most impressed with. Cambamba, 6'3 junior, scoreless so far as his first. Kimbamba, not a guy that scores a lot of points, 6.8 points per game, but he's efficient. 45% from the field, 42% from outside. Just that free throw percentage. Not quite where he'd like it to be at 56. Back at the line, hits them both from the least famous recipe free throw line. And it's now an 11 point lead for the Longhorns. Pratt sets his screen for Gunner, works right. Corner, Smith, baseline, bounces. 
Wessel, pump fakes, gets his defender in the air. Three on the way from Carson Smith, short. And a rebound ripped down by Meyer. And he's fouled. Meyer, a 63% free throw shooter. I like the shot right there from Van Wert. I like that they didn't force anything. They just ran their set very quickly to get an open look. Just not able to convert. Not their night from outside tonight. 8.3% from yeah. beyond the arc. Certainly not going to get it done, especially after that 0 for 7 start in the first half. So they did knock down a Lee Kinsel triple here in the second half, but haven't been able to convert any more since. Is Matthew Meyer, the 6'6 sophomore, currently with 10. Looking for points 11 and 12 as he'll shoot two in the double bonus. Nothing but net on the first. Interesting form from the free throw line, but whatever gets it done. 119 to go. Watch this, man. He kind of shoots with, with it's, both yeah, hands. Yeah, it's, it's Again, not making fun of it. Look, no, it's, it's just, just everyone has their style. It's just different. Whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. And he got them both from the least famous recipe free throw line. Ends up exactly like you like it, though, with that one hand hanging down. Made them both. Top of the key to Gunner. Wessel bounces. Stolen away by Fairley. Or by Cambamba, I beg your pardon. That yeah, might do it for Van Wert. A tremendous effort, a tremendous second half in which they brought themselves back into single digits. Fourth foul committed by Carson Smith. Having a 13-point lead with under a minute to go. Levis going to the line. If you joined us late, Van Wert trailed by 19 points at half. It was 29 to 10. Levis misses the first off the Feliz Famous Recipe free throw line. Looking at a 27 to 21 half for the Cougars following that tough first half. Looks like it might not be enough. We'll see what happens. They obviously pulled off a miracle or two throughout these playoffs. That one hits every bit of the rim and drops for the junior. He's got 17. And after getting it to single digits, Van Wert, Aiden Pratt lets the lease or the Lee Kinsel triple fly. Levis fouled on a rebound attempt. And he'll shoot two more. 48.3 remaining on the Lodox Jewelry scoreboard. Lutheran West 62% from the field, while Van Wert shot 38%. And it looks like. Cougars will start to empty the bench here as Caden Schaefer will come in for Carson Smith, the senior. All five starters were seniors for this Van Wert team. A standing ovation, worst part of the playoffs, right? Watching seniors hit the bench for the last time. Levis shooting two. Buries it. 18 for the junior, averaging 25 throughout this tournament. And now... Ryland Miller, a 6'2 junior, comes on the floor in exchange for Luke Wessel, who will sum out for the final time. Wessel ends tonight with two points. Now Gunter off with four points, three rebounds, three assists, and a steal. Phillips with two points. There's one more out there. And he'll get a rousing ovation from the Van Wert faithful. As Aiden Pratt, first team All-Western Buckeye League performer, 20 points, nine points per contest. Scored 22 here in the regional final. Seven rebounds and a steal to go along with it. Story career for Pratt. I'll end here in the regional finals. 15 point advantage for the Longhorns is Levis. We'll step back to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Going on here. Want to make sure everybody who's supposed to be on the floor is on the floor. Levis steps back to the line, shooting two. Left it short. 
Rebound comes down to Luther and West. Another foul here, so send them back to the line. Probably the, the last foul you'll see with 42.1 seconds left on the clock. So Mordecai Gonson, 6-2 senior at the line. Can't hit off the back iron. And the Longhorns will make some substitutions as Cam Bamba comes off the floor. Clayton Noble back on for Lutheran West. His Godson makes the free throw. 53-37. Campbell bounces it off the floor to Schaefer. And off to Miller. Schaefer will let the Lee Kinsel three fly off the front iron. Noble the board. Longhorns get it across the timeline, back it out, and that'll do it. And again, if you're Van Wert, you have to be so proud of your guys for making a run. Remember, they ended the season 19 and 7, 5 and 4 in the Western Buckeye League. Obviously, off to a slow start because of football taking them deep into the playoffs, but a fantastic job by Van Wert here. Climbing back into this game, playing a great second half after a really tough first half of action. Have to be proud. Cougars trail by 19 at the break. Got it down to as little as nine. Lutheran West pulls away in the end. And for the first time since 1998, the Lutheran West Longhorns are moving on to the state tournament. Man, we're a lot to be proud of, but they fall here in the regional finals, 53-37. We'll come back and put a bow on this one on WOSN. Wrapping up the Division II Regional Final, Lutheran West victorious over Van Wert tonight, 53-37. Thank you. As the Cougars fall in the regional finals, winners of nine in a row can fall here in the regional finals as Lutheran West moves on to represent the Northwest District in the Division II State Tournament. They'll play the winner of Archbishop Alter and Chaminade Julian at the University of Dayton next week. The final score, 53-37. Van Wert led tonight by Aiden Pratt. 22 points, seven rebounds, was fouled eight times tonight, and went six or eight from the free throw line, eight of 11 from inside the three point line. A, a banner day for Aiden Pratt. Unfortunately, comes in a loss, and pretty even balanced scoring from Lutheran West. 18 by Jason Le Levis, 15 by Derek Fairley, and 11 from Matthew Meyer. As the Cougars gave him a heck of a run there in the second half. Got it to as little as nine after trailing by 19 at the halftime break. They only had 10 points. They scored two points in the second quarter. And then they score 16 in the third, uh, drop in 11 in the third, fourth. But just too much Longhorns as Van Wert ends a season that, you know, I'm sure that at one point this was a 10 and 7 squad that people thought. Man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to put it all together. It ends in a regional final. It's, it's been a heck of a run by the Cougars, and they've got a lot to be proud of, Evan. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a, a school that prides themselves on, on athletics, and, and most of their teams have been very, very successful. Basketball, obviously, one of them. But you look across the board, boys and girls, that's just a fantastically run. Athletic department, a fantastic school. Shout out Mark Bagley. And, uh, yeah, I think the, the Cougar Nation will be super proud of, of their team here and certainly looking forward to baseball season and softball season and, and track and, and spring sports right around the corner. So the Cougars fall as they receive their regional runner-up medals. Obviously not the color that they would have preferred coming in, but still a spectacular season that they've given the Van Wert community memories that will last for a very long time as six seniors and their high school basketball careers is Nate Phillips, Luke Wessel, Carson Smith, Garrett Gunner, Aiden Pratt, and A.J. Prophet who played their final games for the Scarlet and Gray as they receive their regional runner-up tournament. This is the final 
high school basketball broadcast for us this year. You get a great look at our crew, and you'd be amazed at how many people it takes to put on the high school basketball season that WOSN has. So a big special thank you to everybody included in bringing high school basketball coverage to you from Kevin Bowers to Ben Reif and Wayne Getz and everybody that you could not possibly imagine the sheer number of people that it takes to bring you the amount of high school basketball that the WOSN crew does. Yeah, and I always say it, we have the easy job. We right. get to show up, we get to talk about sports. They, they come three, four, five, six hours before the game. They have to do all the setup. Uh, they have to run tapes back and forth. They have to do all the production. I mean, there's so much that goes into a broadcast. It makes our jobs easy. It makes our jobs fun. And from the bottom of our hearts, Absolutely. thank you so much to all of you that do so much good work. The unsung heroes of WOSN as you get one final look at the 2022-2023 Van Wert Cougars. The final score tonight, Lutheran West 53, Van Wert 37. For our fantastic, spectacular WOSN crew and Evan Skilleter, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long, and we'll catch you next time here on WOSN. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Rocky River's uh, very talented. Um, you know, I, I felt our game plan was, was really solid. It's just that we just had a tough second quarter where nothing really seemed to go our way. We, we had some good looks. We had some really good looks close to the basket, and it just, just seemed it didn't go in, you know, and then you, you go in at halftime and you're down 19. And I, I've said it all year long. I've got, we've got a really resilient group of guys um, led by our six seniors that they've been in some tough situations and there we knew there wasn't going to be any quit whatsoever and we we made it pretty interesting we, we didn't make it all the way interesting there but um it's just a testament to these guys and their fight that they have um and, I, and the message I just gave them in the locker room is if they carry that into the game of life um, they're going to do go, they're going to go do big things whether that's at the next level playing football like these guys are or, or being a dad and a parent um, they're they're going to do good things, and uh, I'm just really proud of them. Just a little follow-up. Uh, defensively, what were they doing to kind of offset you guys? Well, <laughs> they're quick. Their hands and their athleticism, um, they've got great length. You know, when zero or one and three um, just have really active hands, and when you can put the twin brothers behind them uh, to kind of protect the basket, um, it can make things challenging at times. And... Um, you know, we didn't over, uh, we didn't underestimate or overestimate any of their uh, athleticism. It, we just knew that it was something that um, we'd have to weather the storm a little bit at times, and it, you know, it, it caused us some problems in the second quarter. I, I, the other three quarters, I felt we handled it pretty well, and we, you know, it just, it is what it is, unfortunately. Yes, they had a seven-point game a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, no quit. Um, you know, the message at halftime was it was 19. You know, the first four minutes of the second half, we, we wanted to get it to 14 or 15. And then maybe by 10, by the end of the third quarter, we, I think it was 13, I think, maybe at the end of the third quarter. And then, you know, we got it to seven, and, you know, they had to call a timeout. And essentially, you know, it's a three-possession game where maybe one more bucket, we get it to, to four or five points, and then they really would start to panic. And we, we just never quite got there. We, I mean, we got close, we just couldn't get over that hill a little bit. So, um, you know, our guys, our guys didn't quit. That, you know, if I would have left them into the final buzzer, they would have fought to the final buzzer. But I, I felt it, I needed to take a moment and honor my seniors there, um, you know, so our, they, so our community could show their support as well. Not the result that you wanted, but along this tournament trail for each of you, what was the favorite moment? Um, my favorite moment would have been the buzzer beater that we had against St. Mary's. Um, it was a game that we fought to the very end, and even if we didn't think it was going to end our way, it ended up ending our way because of um, just us being resilient. Uh, I, I had a few good moments throughout this tournament. The first one was us winning our first tournament game in Lima Senior. Us seniors, we haven't won a tournament game, so that was, that was special for us. And then getting the opportunity to play here, it's just amazing. Great crowd, great atmosphere, just couldn't say enough about playing with this team and playing for the community.
coach a lot of your team's been fun to watch all year long, but I, uh, Nate and I has been, you know, I just didn't see a few of your games. Uh, but uh, how do you, did you change uh, any uh, defense strategy? Or it's, I did talk a little bit about defense, but in the second half or the first half, before you knew, knew what you was attacking, but how did you, did you do any changes during any section of the game? Yeah, we probably outcoached ourselves, to be honest with you, when we watched the film. Uh, we thought their overall team quickness um, would cause us some problems. And so we kind of backed off a little bit early on. And, you know, I'll take, I'll take the blame for that. We kind of put the game plan together. And actually, I thought our pressure in the second half caused them to throw, throw the ball out of bounds a few times. And um, it was uncharacteristic of what we saw on film. So, um, you know, it's a credit to these guys. Um, they... they we made a little switch. Hey, we're going to increase pressure. We're going to get up and get up in their stuff and eventually try to create some, some opportunities for us. And that's what we did. And I just wish we would have done it sooner, to be honest with you. Coach Lodic, their athleticism, like I said, it was, like I said, fun to watch. Like I said, they're always playing above the rim, you know, bigger heart. Uh, yep. Yeah, all year long. Uh, yep. Yeah, how you, yeah you, you can only look, look for the, the future after the sort of improvement from this year. Yeah. Um, these six seniors are going to leave a, a large void in our program, a, a large hole. Um, essentially, when I look at the stats here at the end of the year, we're probably going to have to replace probably 90 to 95 percent or a little bit more of scoring, rebounding, assists, steals, et cetera. I mean, they, they, they did it all for us, and, and they've done it together for a very long time since, you know, I have a son who's one year older, and I've seen him playing since they were this big, and now they're this big. So I'm... Um, um, they're 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 going to leave a hole, you know, in, in our in our program next year. But um, they definitely left a mark, a very positive mark. Uh, not many Van Wert basketball teams have ever made it this far. We sure would have liked to get one step farther. But at the same time, when we reflect back on this, you know, a week or two, a year, ten years from now, we're, we're going to say that you know this was a lot of fun. This is a this is a core memory that we're going to remember forever. And uh, these guys, and along with their teammates, and a lot of other guys in our school have a lot of great memories to, to remember from a lot of different sports, you know, football, basketball, and track, and baseball, et cetera. I mean, they've, they've, they've kind of left a legacy at Van Wert where they've done some really cool stuff that um, me personally, when I was in high school, I kind of wish I could have left to, you know, did some of these things that they've got to do. So it's, it's pretty cool. I'm sad to not be able to coach them again, but I, I love them. The, the door is always open, and uh, I, I, we kind of said what we needed to say in the locker room afterwards, and uh, they know how I feel about them. But as I said, again, Nate and I had, had so much fun as a crowd did too watching you, just the fact that you, you shut down a team that was uh, so explosive that they'd score 80, 70, 80, 90 points a game. Uh, that was, you know, you, how you teach defense uh, goes a long way. Well, I mean, we can teach them uh, certain techniques, but at the same time, they've got to – they got to buy in, and it's it's a mindset, and it, it, you know it comes kind of come from their heart. And, he, and these guys just dug their dug their heels in, and you know, you know the scoreboard is going to show that it was probably a 16, 17 point loss, but essentially there with three, four minutes to go, it's a three possession game, and you know, just a credit to these guys. I'm really proud of them. Thank you for your time. Thank you, I appreciate it. Credit to um, the way you guys compete all season long, not just today. You guys always compete to the final buzzer. That's the one thing I noticed about being work this year. Yep, uh, we we were we were always in it. There was never a there was n never a moment where it was like oh doubt. We never let doubt creep in in any game whatsoever. Like you know, even even at halftime, you know we 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 challenged them and they rose to the challenge. And there was there was no doubt we were we were going to try to make it as interesting as possible. Okay. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Work, when we watch them on film, it's tough trying to prepare in one day for, for a team, you know, that in a regional final. And, you know, we were a little nervous coming in as far as just not being overly prepared like we normally are for games. And they do a really good job. But I think our guys defensively kind of, you know, that led to charge for us to be able to get out to uh, the lead that we were able to get out to. And we just continued to defend trip by trip, which caused the lead that we got. 
Yeah, no, we wanted to keep it up. We didn't want to change anything being up 19 at half. We knew that they would, they would come back. They're not a team that's just going to lay down. You know, we knew they'd go on a run, and we knew that they would hit some shots and everything like that. I think we kind of got a little nervous going into the end of the third, into the fourth, trying to hurry the game up before it would be over. And, um, you know, it kind of showed out there. But we settled in, and these guys made big plays all night to, to bring us home. Practice it a lot. Um, so Derek was Derek's a really good point guard. He gets the ball going in transition. That's what makes us our best. So he just got to go in early, and he was flowing the ball around the court, and we just looked good. Yeah, I know. Um, at practice, coach has us do three ball shooting, shooting every day. So I just uh, work on game shots and just shoot my hardest every time I shoot. And defensively, what were you guys trying to do today? Um, uh, just pressure a little bit, because you know, like. They haven't really seen a team like uh, like us with athletic, uh, athleticism, so we just had to pressure them. So yeah, um, we just showed like who we really are, and we just jumped on them really early, so they knew who we really were. So we didn't show them that we were nervous. We just had to play hard from the jump. Yeah, no, his, yeah, that's our, that's kind of our staple. That's my staple and how we coach and how I coach. And, you know, what we wanted to bring to this program is just a defensive mindset. And, you know, being able to hold that type of team to 10 points in a, in a half, you know, is major for us. And I think that's kind of the key for us winning. And we, we do defense for probably an hour of the hour and 45 minutes that we practice. So, like, just different styles of how we want to play and different, you know, schematic uh, things that we want to do to try to bother teams, and we work on it daily, and it showed tonight. Talk to me about the way you guys boxed out defensively. It's like every time they were had a shot attempt, you made sure there were no offensive rebounds. It was one and done. It looks like you guys knew your box out very well. That was key for you this afternoon, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we knew that they were going to come in hard. They knew that they were very confident in uh, the run that they have made so far. So we knew that they're not scared of us, so we just have to play ourselves. Derek? Yeah, um, at practice, we do this drill called Shell, and one of his keys is making sure we box out after a shot goes up. So Finish we practice on boxing, uh, boxing out every day. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, that's a key to winning this time of, of the season anyway, is, is trying to hold teams to, to, you know, one possession. And, you know, we thought we did a good job of getting out on their shooters and making their shooters have to put the ball on the ground. But once they shot it over us, we wanted to make sure we finished the possession by rebounding. Uh, Derek and Jason, you were so sweet in watching, watching you play that the, actually the unselfishness, you know, passing the ball when, it, when the shot wasn't there, you, yeah, you had your head in the game and you, have you been playing long together to be able to do that? Uh, yeah, I've been going to school with him since kindergarten. So, yeah, we've been playing with each other since like fourth grade and my mom is a coach. So, yeah, we've been playing for a while. Yeah, that's why, yeah, that's why, it, yeah, it looks so great yeah. for you two. Uh, and, uh, and whether it's a dynamic duel or whatever, uh, like I said, that when you when you got two top players, all you, and like I said, that as we talked previously, that you, that you shot the lights out that first half, you, know, you hardly missed. That was, you know, um, yeah. Then Coach Jordan, uh, uh, Jordan Duke. Uh, now the you can only only go up from here. Yeah. The, the fact is, you, the, you had such an explanation. What had a great season. Um, only you only had only had one loss uh, that was a little bit. Uh, a, a little bit fuzzy as far as that you know mm -hmm. didn't didn't wasn't con, you know in contention yeah maybe that one game yeah uh, but yet uh, uh, you don't dwell you didn't dwell at all on your record uh, you know coming into this yeah. No, I, we didn't. Um, I think, uh, you know, that loss against Holy Name kind of helped us, you know. And um, when, when we lost that home to Holy Name, you know, it kind of set us back to making sure that we got back to what, you know, we were about, you know, as a team and as a program and what our identity was, you know. And, I mean, they were a really good team as well, you know. And, um, you know, our other two losses was to Archbishop Hoban, who is um, in the Final Four, and, you know, Lutheran East, who was in the Final Four. And so um, we, we made the schedule the way we made it to be able to get to this point and feel comfortable in games like this. And I think because of that schedule that we've played, you know, big games are big games, but we're used to playing in them. Very good point, because, yeah, your, your schedule and your Tournament trail, it all uh, you know comes into play. The which game you play next. Yeah. Uh, 
So, we, like, go, going into the Final Four, we don't know who we play. I don't know if it's Shamanah, Juliet, or uh, Alter. We don't know yet. But, like, yeah, they play tonight. But, like, I think that, you know, those guys are those are two really good teams, and we got to play our best to be able to win down there. But once you get to the Final Four, anything can happen, and we're going to prepare like it's another game, and we're going to go out and be confident like we are. And, you know, whatever happens at the end of the game happens. You know, that's kind of our how our mentality has been moving forward is not to be too – tight, we want to be loose and go out and have fun playing a game that we love. Yeah, Coach Jordan, dude, yeah, that, that's, that's the best, uh, like I said, that that's, would be my philosophy too, that, you know, you got to have fun to get out there and, and win. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so be it, uh, um, it just, uh, that's pretty much all that I had to say. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. If I didn't have these two guys, man, <laughs> you know, and the rest of our guys, man, you know, like we... Yeah, yep, three players, yep. All right, thanks, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you guys yep. so much. much